Hey y'all, so most of you guys know that today I had my trial to finalize my divorce and um, it wasn't the, the outcome that I wanted. Um, my divorce has been postponed yet another three months. Um, he, um, he's not wanting to, um, he's not wanting to settle and, um, he's asking for some like ridiculous things. Um, some things that are really irrelevant. It's really all about money, not really about the kids, not about anything else, but money. And, um, I, I'm so tired of fighting this battle. Um, and you know, if it was just like a small amount of money, I'd be like, F it, keep it. I don't care. I just want to move on. I, I just want my freedom. I want to live my life, but he's literally asking for $50,000. Um, it's crazy. It's, it's absurd. Um, and everybody keeps telling me like, don't be discouraged. You know, it's just a piece of paper, paper. And, um, you know, he's moved on and like, you have your life now, you got your own place now. And like, um, you guys are finally starting to try to sell the house and stuff, but it's more than just a paper. This is my life. <laughs> like, I feel like he's held me for far too long and I just want him to free me. <laughs> and it's just not fair. I don't think anybody really talks about how long it can take to <laughs> divorce somebody that's so toxic and so miserable and so <laughs> vindictive and spiteful. <laughs> and um, it just sucks because they will drag it on. <laughs> even though they've moved on with their life, it's like they still want control and they want to hold on to you. And, um, and it sucks. It sucks so bad. Like, anyway, I'm just in my feelings right now. I know I'm going to move past this. It just sucks. I was expecting to finally be free from this and to like be able to move past this and live my life and move forward. And, um, I just feel stuck. I feel so stuck and it sucks so bad. Oh, so it's all about how he won't let go? It's funny since you wanted the split. $50,000 is a lot of money right now, but maybe it's not even close to what he's been through. Why is it now the biggest problem if it's just a piece of paper? Divorce isn't just quick freedom. It means taking responsibility for the choices you made. You might want to think about why you're really stuck. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Woman can't stop crying after instantly regretting divorcing her husband. Allow us to begin right away. Oh my god, hi! How are you? It's been so long. Just kidding, we're strangers. Um, and you don't know me. And this is my first video on this page. Did I grab your attention? Probably not, that's okay, you can keep swiping. I'm bored and something is telling me, it's not rational thought, but something is telling me to start talking. At, at myself on the internet and just like let's see what sticks you know maybe it'll make someone laugh maybe it will motivate someone maybe it will be inspirational uh, or maybe it'll just be like who is this bitch? it could be any of those things it could be none of those things but we won't know unless we try right so in the spirit of not giving a fuck um here we are so who am i my name <laughs> is Abby. I am a millennial. I'm also a single parent. I'm divorced. Love living my single era. I have no interest in dating, but do have some good stories. I was almost going to give away too much. I'm going to save that one for later. But anyways, back to who am I and why should you stick around. I'm on this like journey to discover my life's purpose and I'm doing lots of different things to try and like sort out what that purpose might be. Um, including watch the movie soul. And let me tell you, I think the lesson is that like your purpose isn't like the thing you're supposed to be good at, but like the small moments. Did I like totally miss interpret that movie because I haven't actually watched the beginning to end in a long time because my kid again is five and has a really small attention span so we'll start something and then 
not finish it. So I could be mistaken. But anyways, back to the point. Trying to discover that at 37 years old is crazy. What is it? I don't know. That's what we're going to figure out. And that's what I'm going to bring bring the internet along for. And even if it's just one of you and possibly my mom who has burner TikTok accounts, apparently, Betsy, whatever she can see this. At age 37, you're trying to figure out what your life's purpose is based on a movie you haven't even seen all the way through. It's like having to write a report on a book after only reading the first chapter. You might want to focus on finishing something for once instead of making half-finished kids movies and TikTok rants. But if your mom's burner TikTok account is your main audience, you might not be ready to really dig into life's big problems. Set a higher goal and maybe watch a movie before you think deeply about it. So I keep seeing all of these videos pop up on my feed page of tattooed women um, complaining that tattooed men don't want to date them. Um, I saw one woman even go as far as to say that tattooed men who date women without tattoos are all um, Perdida files. Well, you know what I mean. They all um, have an affinity for younger women. Or they are narcissists who date women without tattoos um, because they would like to be able to control them. Like always, women who belong to a certain group start shaming men when men don't want to date them. There's something admirable about this tattooed woman calling out the other inked women for being so rude. They will never understand that guys have their own rules. For the sake of being, like, totally fucking transparent and just, like, real on social media because everyone's so fucking phony and, like, refuses to talk about, like, real things that are, like, really happening i just i just found out today that my ex-husband is engaged and i'm unwell <laughs> and listen i'll be fine but the only way out is through okay the only way out of this is through it you cannot bypass it you cannot suppress it you cannot wish it didn't exist you cannot well you can wish it didn't exist but you cannot just like pretend that it doesn't affect you the only way out is directly through i know i will be fine i'm hoping that future me comes back to this and is like you were you were gonna be good. You were gonna be fine, and and you know it. I know it. I know I will. And like, even though yes, it was me that was like, "Hi, I want divorce. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore. I can't do this anymore." <laughs> like literally, hey, sorry, play Taylor Swift. I hate it here. Like I can't can't do this anymore. Even though that is true. It can also be true that it f***ing sucks. It brings up all these feelings. It brings up all this, like, stuff. And we have a kid, and it brings up all this stuff around him. And very little of it has anything to do with my actual ex. Ugh. So, I'm here to be real. I can't live any other way. And I feel like people should be more out loud about it because I wish that I had more people that were like totally honest and like super fucking transparent in really difficult times. Because this is what like builds connections and like builds like common ground and builds like validity and all this shit that we feel that people just don't talk about. And I I hate it. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna be done because I, I just, I just, you know, I'll be fine. Everything will be right. But these days, most women put on a front on the internet while they cry all the time when they're not with other people. This is how things really are for most women today. In their hearts, they are sad. This woman is new to TikTok and is only now understanding how fake everyone is. She can see that these women who are divorced and cheering each other up are pretending to be happy about their split. 
but she realized that everyone is fake and doesn't want to talk about their real problems when she thought about what was going on in her real life. This is one of the main reasons I keep showing these modern women, because they are all putting on a show to make divorce seem beautiful so that other women will agree with them and be miserable too. I will not stop until I've found out about all of these fake modern women who are happy and split. Does anyone else feel like this? I just need to know if I'm the only one. So I turned 39 this week, so I'm nearly 40. And when I tell you that I cried, I had anxiety, I had the worst day ever. This was on my actual birthday. I was in a placement as well that I'm not enjoying, so that didn't help. What is it with the 40 age? Why is it so many of us are scared of turning 40? I think for me, I feel like I'd be further along in my life, things would be different to where they're at. And I think there's this like panic. And again, it's it's probably due to comparison, isn't it? Of like looking at other people's lives and where they're at and what they're achieving. That you haven't achieved the things that you wanted to, that you set out in your life. Because we've all had setbacks. Our, you know, our traumas and our self-sabotages like gear us off track every now and then. Sometimes you just feel so unmotivated and you cannot be asked. I just wanted to know, am I the only one? Oh, so you're upset about turning 40 because things didn't go as planned? Welcome to being an adult. Instead of having a panic attack over a number, you might want to think about what you can control. It won't make things better to compare yourself to others and feel sorry for yourself. Bad things happen to everyone, but whining about them won't make them go away. Stop being so sad. You're 39 years old now, not 19. Take charge of your life. I think everybody needs to go to therapy. I know that's not a revolutionary statement. It's probably obvious, but everybody needs to go to therapy. A number of times my mind has been blown by my therapist this year alone in the last six months of working with her. Can't count on two hands. She's amazing. Not the point. The point is she gave me a uh, book recommendation last week. This is the most recent thing that has been blowing my mind. So the book is called Essential Kink and at it very simply stated, it's a book about shadow work and like, you know, digging into your shadow side, your subconscious and integrating it with your conscious side or your ego. And one of the repeated themes throughout the book is the following quote, having is the evidence of wanting. This book suggests that without actually doing work with your subconscious side and bringing to light some of your shadow side, we won't actually be able to manifest the things that we want and live in this synchronicity with all the positive experiences that we try and manifest in because we have to address the elephant in your, your whole being is your subconscious. Going back to having is the evidence of wanting. If we have all of these crappy situations in our life that we can't seem to change it's because somewhere in us we actually do want those things listen i know it sounds a little crazy and maybe controversial to like admit out loud that the bad things that are drawn into our lives might be because somewhere deep down we want those things i know that sounds a little bit crazy but let me give you a real life example I like to make what I call the Mary Poppins list. And of course in Mary Poppins, the kids are making a list of attributes for their ideal nanny, what they're looking for. And the dad finds the list, you know, they give it to him, he reads it, he shreds it up and throws it in the goddamn chimney like an asshole. But regardless, those kids made a list and it was essentially like, these are my wishes, this is what I wanna manifest. And out pops Mary Poppins. So that's why I call it the Mary Poppins list. But I made one for what I would like my future partner to be. All the qualities, all the traits, all the ways that they will make me feel in the future. Time and time again, I get on these mother dating apps and is it the men that I'm envisioning that are liking me? It's, it's certainly not. Not to be a dick and I'm, listen, like there's someone for everyone, but like, it's just not, not my type. Not the thing I'm looking for. They're like, just just not it like so far away from <laughs> what I want there you have it in their hearts most of these modern women know they want the bad boy they can't get enough of the guys who treat them badly which is why they leave safe relationships to go after Chad and Tyrone these modern women want to keep their standards high even though they don't deserve a high-value guy this clip's second part shows this keep in mind that this is a 37 year old woman who is separated and talking to her child also, remember how she bragged in one of the previous clips about how much she loves being single. For these women, this means that the story that they choose to be single is generally not true. All of them want to be with someone.
but the guys they want to date are already taken. The last part of the video will show how easily these modern women are swayed by the media's decades-long push for a false sense of women's freedom. Click the like button to let people know you enjoyed the show. You'll know when I add new shots if you click the bell. Thanks for everything you've done. Do something right away. Come back to this page to see more videos of people hitting walls.